Okay, so we're going to CNC some box parts today, and it's for this particular job right here that uh, the bedroom cabinetry is going to be a widescreen TV right between this, these two towers. Uh, banks of drawers, three different banks of drawers. The centers popped out a couple of inches, so we have three separate cabinets on the base, two towers sitting on top of a countertop. Uh, there is a drawer on the bottom of those, so there's a thick shelf between there. And um, let's go to the plan view, just show you uh, something about the upper cabinet and how the joinery is going to work out. So this is the upper, basically we have an unfinished end on this end and a face on the other side, so we have a frame and a door panel in the center. We have a what will be called a partition hiding behind that style as well over there so that we can get drilling for these adjustable shelves and get a fixed shelf datoed into that partition on that side and into that unfinished end on that side. The bottom of the cabinet will also be datoed into the sides. We can have a look at one of those parts. You can see that we're getting a grouping of five uh, shelf pin holes for each part there. Uh, let's see, we'll go to the unfinished end and have a look. So this is the machining that will take place on the unfinished end. We're going to have a, a dado for that fixed shelf that's right above the drawer and we'll have three groups of drilling for the adjustable shelves. Alright, so we're going to back out of here and show you how easy it is to go from screen to machine. This right here is the NC center. So right now it's creating all the parts, plywood parts, all the parts actually for that, for all those cabinets. So here's a list of all the parts that are going into that. Now on this particular job I don't want to cut any drawer box parts. I'm still undecided whether or not we're going to go solid wood or plywood so I'm filtering the parts for to optimize everything except for these drawer box parts so I'm going to click every single part except for there might be some frame parts in there that I'm going to dance around uh, that's the right style I don't want to do that um, <clears throat> so no top rail, the top structure, and these unfinished ends. So click OK. Now all those parts that I want optimized are highlighted. And I hit Optimize. Now it's done its Tetris game. And it's stuffed all, all the parts that of similar material onto these sheets. So this is three-quarter pre-finished maple plywood panel. I need two panels. And you can see that those the upper cabinets that are on top of the deck are are made with pre-finished plywood. As we open the doors, we want that to be pre-finished. And then the last part is uh, you know tops, bottoms, and and ends of the cabinet. If we come down here and look at the the raw. Uh, I got a countertop that's going to be cut out and a couple of finished ends for that center section um, and amongst all the other parts so that's what's going to happen and there's a other uh, quarter inch plywood and whatnot stuffed in there as well so once I'm happy with that and well, I see that I got some uh, solid stock in there I must not have done the filter just right but we'll go ahead and say we want to go here, which is going to generate the G-code for the machine. So right now it's it's creating the language that the machine can read. And each one of those sheets is in a file now. Each, each one of these programs is a sheet of material that will be cut on the machine. Now that machine is ready to go. All I want to do now is print 
a picture that's very similar to this picture right here so when we're pulling the parts off the machine uh, I can label them accordingly what cabinet and what part it is so that we can uh, try to keep it squared away while we're assembling it. So we're going to go out to the machine. Okay so the last sheet that I'm going to show you is this three-quarter pre-finished plywood that has some of those ends of those upper cabinets that have the adjustable shelves and whatnot in it. I have uh, I have a sheet of three-quarter loaded up on there. The program's loaded in the machine. We'll hit the green button and we'll come and take care of all those holes drilling first once again. Always drills the holes first. unique about this machine is that it's got a separate drill head um, than the cheaper machines. They use the main spindle to drill the holes, so we'd have to put a, a five millimeter bit in that in that main spindle and drill one hole at a time. And you see right here, these patterns of patterns of five holes are getting drilled all at one time because I have I have five drills in that Y axis, so I can drill up to five holes in one in one plunge. So I have basically what I have going on here is three parts, one, two, three. So there's groupings of three shelf. And we just drill five holes per shelf. Um, it, instead of machine gunning the, the whole end of the cabinet with holes, we find that that, that works out nice. People, people tend not to like a million holes as if we were using a line boring machine like we used to. That machine that's, you know, zoom in on it. That machine right there used to do our line boring and that we hardly ever use anymore. So, now we come back here and it's gonna, I don't think there's any small parts on this, so it's, may end up just outlining the parts after it's done dadoing. We've got a couple of tops and bottoms that get rabbited. We are gonna we are gonna come back down here and do some dadoing for those thick shelves that are right above those drawers. One thing I can show you about this machine is that we have a rack and pinion gear in the Y axis. Right underneath, right, right there is the gear that rides on this, on this rack of gears right here. Um, and evidently it's some kind of special rack and pinion that uh, if it was to get worn out, it would, the gear would normally just um, go up into the, the teeth of the gear and keep the gear lash down to a minimum even after it starts to wear a little bit. And that's as opposed to a ball screw. If I can look right under there, that's the x-axis right there. And there's a screw right there and that's called a ball screw. And cheaper machines have a ball screw for this y for this y-axis and, and that's very hard to keep from getting vibration as it travels from one end to the other. So this one has got the cast, it's cast here, it's got this machine rail to ride on and that rack and pinion gear. It keeps the gear latched down to uh, next to nothing. So we're outlining the parts again. You notice that the machine again doesn't come up out of the material. All it does to stay down in the material. It's a half inch bit and there's nine sixteenths inches of room between the parts. So the only wasted movement is when the machine moves over that curve at one sixteenth to get to on, get onto the edge of the adjoining part. Does 
thing. So there's the adjustable shelves, the fixed shelf that's right above a drawer in the part. And we have some tops and bottoms that are dated up at the other end. Uh, looks like a couple of adjustable shelves over there. And this particular sheet, we do have this much off fall on it. Still not all that bad though. Fairly quick for all that work that we just did. And that's it. We're going to do a couple more things and we're going to start assembling.